Today's lesson is about solving two-step equations. Your learning target says, I can apply what I know about inverse operations to solve two-step equations. So here I have our first problem and I want you to write it down in your notebook. And I want you also to remember that this variable wants to be alone. We want to isolate our variable. But right now it's being bugged or bothered by these two numbers. And so those numbers have to go so that my variable is by itself. Now we're going to do PEMDAS backwards. So step one, and I want you to write this down. Step one, we are going to eliminate the constant. So that happens to be the 2 right here. And so it used to be adding 2. And so we know with our inverse operations that the opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2. But I can't do something like that to one side without also doing it to the other. A positive 2 and a negative 2, that makes an inverse pair. That's 0. And so then I'm left with three x's on this side of my balance and 12 on the other. All right, step two, and you're going to write this down. We are going to eliminate our coefficient. That's the multiplier that's stuck onto our variable. And so right now I have 3 times x, and so I'm going to use my inverse operation. Instead of multiplying by 3, I'm dividing by 3. I can't do something to the left that I don't also do to the right. 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. And if you really want to write 1x equals 4, you certainly can. But generally, we just eliminate that and we say x equals 12 divided by 3 or 4. Now, I think that's the answer, but let's go back and let's plug it in. Here is my original equation. We have 3 times x, but I think x is 4 plus 2. That's 12. 12 plus 2 is indeed 14 it checks out, we have the right answer. Here's our next problem. Now I see an awful lot of subtraction signs. I don't really like all those subtraction signs, so let's fix that first. That seems a, a lot of mess that we don't have to deal with. And so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna change this to addition, and I'm gonna change this to a positive too. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my um, steps. Remember step one, we are going to eliminate the constant. That's this two. And the opposite of adding two is subtracting two. I can't do something to one side without also doing it to the other. This creates an inverse or zero. That leaves 4m's on one side of my equation and 16 on the other. Step 2, I'm going to eliminate the coefficient. I'm going to have to abbreviate that because I'm running out of room. That's this 4 that's multiplied by my m. So the opposite of multiplying by 4, I guess I didn't really need my division sign. Let me get rid of that. Here's a division sign. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. And I need to make sure I do the same thing on both sides. 4 divided by 4 will give me 1m, but I'm going to be lazy and just write 1m like this. 16 divided by 4 is 4. I think that's my answer. But I'm going to go back and check it out. So here's my original. I had 4 times m plus 2. Well, that's 16 plus 2 is indeed 18. I've got the right answer. All right, here's one to try on your own. I want you to write this in your notebook, solve it, come back and check your answer. All right, step one. I'm going to eliminate 
my constant. The opposite of adding one, subtracting one from both sides. This is an inverse pair, it cancels. I'm left with two x's on one side and four on the other. My second step is to get rid of my coefficient. The opposite of multiplying by two is dividing by two, both sides. This creates one, sorry, green, one x, but I'm just gonna write one x like that. Four divided by two is two. I think that's my answer, but let's go back and plug it in. Two times x, which I think is two, plus one. That's four plus one is indeed five. It works out, I have the right answer. Your turn again. I want you to write this down and solve it. When you're ready, come back for checking. All right, step one. I have to get rid of my constant. The opposite of adding 11 is subtracting 11 from both sides. Creates an inverse pair or zero. That leaves u divided by negative two on one side and nine minus 11 is negative two on the other side. So step two is to get rid of this. The opposite of dividing by negative two is multiplying by negative two. But I can't do it to just one side, I have to do it to the other as well. This creates one u, and this negative two times negative two is a positive four. I think my answer is four, which appears to be a very popular answer today. Let's go back up here and check. If u is four, four divided by negative two plus 11, four divided by negative two is negative two, plus 11 is indeed nine, we have the right answer. Try this one on your own and come back for checking. All right, the first thing I would say is there's way too many subtraction signs here. So I would keep, I would change, and instead of a negative seven, I'd put a positive seven. That just looks nicer to me. So we're gonna go with that one instead. Getting rid of your constant first. The opposite of positive seven is negative seven or subtracting seven from both sides. That cancels. I'm left with negative 12 G's on one side and 31 minus seven is 24 on the other. Second step, get rid of my coefficient. The opposite of multiplying by negative 12 is dividing by negative 12, both sides. That leaves me with 1g. 24 divided by 12 is negative 2. I think that's the answer, but I'm going to plug it in. Negative 12 times g, which we think is negative 2, plus 7. So that's 24 plus seven does equal 31. We're good to go. Okay, solve it. Come back for checking. All right, here's what I would do. I would get rid of my constant. I can't add two. 2 plus 2 is 4. I want that to be gone. I need to subtract 2 from both sides. Don't forget this is a negative. That leaves negative v over 3 equals negative 12. Okay, the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. But notice what happens. I have a negative, oops, let me change my color. I have a negative V equals 36. 
And I'm sorry to tell this V, but no one cares about negative Vs. We want positive Vs. So remember, there's an invisible number one here. To get rid of a multiply by negative one, I would divide by negative one. This is actually a three-step problem. And then positive V would be 36 divided by negative one or negative 36. All right, story problem time. It says Lynn wants to save $900, so that's her total. So I know something has to equal $900. She has 180 plus she's going to save 45 every week. 45 times however many weeks. And together, the 180 and the 45 every week has to equal the $900. So I've got my equation. Go ahead and pause me while you solve it. All right, here's what I would do. I would take off the 180 that she already had because she doesn't have to save for that. She already has that. So that leaves $45 every week she has to come up with $720 that way. And then I would divide by 45 because that's the opposite of multiplying by 45. And it looks like it's going to take her 16 weeks to save her money. Okay, this one's for you. See if you can come up with the equation and then solve it. Come back when you're ready for checking. Alrighty. So we know he bought four begonias, but we don't know how much they cost because that's the question. We have to find the price of each begonia. So he bought four begonias. This six isn't even a number that we need to deal with. I was trying to trick you. That's just the size of the pot. So four begonias and a $19 fern, and he spent $63. All right, so my equation's going to look like this. Step one, let's get rid of that fern. So when you take care or get rid of that fern, four begonias equaled $44. Well, that's easy. Let's divide by four. And I believe every begonia is going to be $11. But if I wanted to check it, I would put it back up in here. Four times $11 for a begonia plus 19. 44 plus 19 is 63. We have the right answer.